culture is a, is a fuzzy concept. Uh, you could talk about culture at the national level, uh, so the Chinese culture or the American culture or, or uh, British culture. What we're interested in is a far more tangible, a far more specific thing. And here we're referring specifically to uh, three mindset or attitude related uh, factors and three process related factors that seem to be shared across all of these com uh, companies where uh, that seem to have a culture of uh, innovation. By far the most important of these has to do with uh, something in the minds of those um, who are innovative. The extent to which senior executives or decision makers within these companies spend time thinking about the future. That turns out to predict a lot uh, the extent to which they will be innovative in the future. Now that sounds really simple. After all, if you're the head of a company, an entrepreneur or a CEO, um, you, you might think that um, a big part of your role is to focus on the future. And in fact, what, what, what studies have shown is that, especially as, uh, as companies get larger, decision makers within these companies tend to spend relatively little, rather scarily little time thinking about the future, focusing on especially the medium to long term future. In fact, some studies have suggested that the amount of time or the percentage of time senior executives spend on future oriented things, um, especially in large companies, is about 3%. So that's point one. Point two had to do with what we call a willingness to cannibalize. That is the extent to which companies are willing to destroy the value of assets they themselves built. Now this is somewhat counterintuitive and hard to do, uh, but the innovative companies tend to uh, be willing to prepare to destroy the value of the uh, assets they already built. They uh, put together processes and uh, incentives that uh, allow for this. The third mindset or attitude related factor has to do with the company's approach to risk. The innovative companies tend to be more tolerant of risk. Now that sounds kind of obvious and that sounds kind of uh, simple, but once again, uh, the reality of how they manage risk without letting risk become too overwhelming um, provides some insights. Either by using a portfolio where they do a few breakthrough um, disruptive, radical innovation, and many incremental innovations. The other is relying not only on risky decisions or risky activities yourself, but relying on outside innovators um, to take risks as well, and being very savvy about incorporating uh, innovations from outside. There are also three practice-related things. So if every company uh, in the world were innovative, these would be three things that they would share. Number one, they would give a fair bit of influence to champions of innovation. By that, uh, I mean individuals, uh, and indeed it is individuals, even in large organizations that, are, that promote innovations, uh, these individuals uh, would have influence within the organization. Secondly, um, they would have incentives for, uh, for uh, innovations or enterprise, but what mattered the most was whether or not the companies have a asymmetric approach to innovation. What's that? The rewards to success are much higher than the punishment for failure. So if you are uh, successful, you know that you'll do, do well within the company. You might earn more, or you might get a promotion, you might get recognition, uh, etc. If you do badly, it's not that punishment, uh, the innovation or failure is never punished, but you know that any punishment will be substantially smaller than the reward for potential um, success. And final point, and this is where the sum difference between large and small firms um, has to do with the level of internal autonomy within units within the organization and competition within the organization. So the innovative, especially large companies, tended to have uh, internal competition where in, uh, there was a marketplace for ideas within the company and if you, a decision maker in the company, was unwilling or uh, in, unable to pursue the idea, uh, someone else within the company would and there would be internal competition that would promote uh, innovation.